Hello and welcome back and that's right today we're continuing looking at drive verification and different storage scenarios on the new Synology 2025 series of devices. This is a DS95 Plus, we've already put a review uh, up already on this device and I'm going to say today's video more than anything is probably going to rile a lot of users up. We're going to look at a plethora of different scenarios using Synology drives, using third-party hard drives, using third-party SSDs, we're going to be looking at migration, we're going to be looking expansion we're going to be looking at um, raid recovery we're going to be looking at different kinds of storage scenario suggested by you i went through the comments of the previous video and i did a whole post on reddit going through it to asking you guys to give me some different scenarios that you want to see to see how things are running right now now on the ds95 again i'm sorry if you already know this i should highlight there is a chapter bar along the bottom of the screen going through every single one of the test scenarios so if you don't want to hear this or you already know it skip on ahead but for the rest of you, uh, Synology with the 2025 series of devices is revamping their certification and their verification of third-party drives on their platform. But right now, at the time of recording, only Synology drives are on that list. Now, we covered it in a bunch of other videos. I do recommend you check those out. Uh, but ultimately, a lot of users are concerned about when they are migrating away from an existing Synology NAS onto a 2025, what they can and cannot do if those drives that they're using are on the verification list. And also, if they are a new user that perhaps aren't able to find Synology drives in their region or find the Synology drive very expensive, what exactly can they do and what they can't do using third-party drive media? So again, bottom of the screen, all the chapters, and I'll see you at the end of this video. I've already done the testing, and I'll be honest, a couple of these have really ticked me off, but I'll see you at the end of the video where we'll summarize all of these results. But let's go. Initializing a 2025 Synology with unverified drives. I've already covered this in the DS925 Plus review, but it is worth including here, along with repeating some of the other tests from that video for the sake of completion. Um, if you use unverified drives on a brand new installation on the DS925 Plus, here you're not able to initialize the system. You can't go beyond the initial setup there. Again, real bummer, this is a huge change over DSM 7.2 running on uh, any previous generation Synology NAS. Initialization with unverified SATA SSDs. Surprisingly, unlike trying to use unverified uh, hard drives, if you use unverified SATA SSDs, you can actually initialize the system. Now, whether this is something Synology might change later on or something they've left open uh, as their own SATA SSDs, although high performance are a great deal more expensive than other ones in the market, we're not sure, but nonetheless, there is still uh, support right now, at the very least, of initializing third party uh, or unverified, I should say, SATA SSDs. That said, be warned, if you do choose to use uh, unverified SATA SSDs, the system is put in quite an overbearing, kind of aggressively at-risk state, at least if you go by the notifications on screen there. Now, a lot of this is just based on, or I say a lot of it, all of it is just based on the fact using drives that aren't on Synology's um, verified compatibility listing. So you see words like at-risk and unverified and warning and some of the language is particularly aggressive. And again, I think Synology needs to listen to a lot more examples and case studies of utilizing unverified drives and when they have become problematic rather than just linking to their own compatibility pages in places they need to uh, point people um, at least the the motivation and the explanation for you know language like at risk unverified warning and more which is going to be very alarming particularly if you're a system integrator or installer on a third party who sets this up and then someone, an end user at the deployment there, is faced with quite uh, an aggressive screen. Expanding a pool made up of verified disks with an unverified drive. As you might have expected, you're not able to expand an existing RAID pool of verified Synology hard drives with another drive if it is unverified. You're not able to expand that pool and I know that, again, it's going to annoy quite a lot of users, something we talked about in the DS925 Plus video there, and particularly when you're using Synology's SHR, which alongside mixed capacities has always been quite handy for creating pools of mixed drives. So again, kind of disappointed on this one to say the very least, but trust me, something that will irk you is coming up later. Expanding a pool of unverified SATA SSDs. 
Much like the initialization using unverified SATA SSDs, you can indeed expand a pool of unverified SSDs with another SSD there. I was able to get it to work. Uh, unsurprisingly though, if I tried to use a hard drive on that pool, it didn't work. Um, a little bit of me was wondering if this was to do with the classification of hard drives and SSDs, even though uh, the capacity of the hard drives I was adding was obviously larger. But as we'll get on to later on, it wasn't as clear cut as that. Likewise, a pool made up of unverified SATA SSDs did allow me to do a repair when I went ahead and created an artificial ray degradation by removing one of those disks and then reintegrating a new SATA SSD. It would allow me to repair with a SATA SSD, but again, much like the expansion, if I tried to inject an unverified SATA hard drive, it wouldn't allow me to repair. Creating a standalone storage pool on an already set up system. I just wanted to add this further test. If you do have the Synology NAS set up, regardless of whether you're doing a migration, regardless of whether you're using verified hard drives or SSDs, if you do want to add an existing new pool, the rules do seem to still apply. So if you're running DSM and you want to create a new uh, storage pool, single drive or more, uh, utilizing SATA SSDs, it does allow you to do so. But if you try to do it uh, even on an initialized and set up system with SATA, uh, SATA hard drives, unfortunately you still can't create a new pool. Migrated, but still nonetheless unverified storage pool, expansion and hot spare. This one really concerned me. Up to this point, most of the tests that I've done, I've kind of thought, oh, well, it's still within Synology's uh, overall arching presentation here when they're moving towards a full verification process, but this really did leave me feeling cold. When I had my carried over RAID pool from a DS923 that contained drives that were verified on the DS923, these are Seagate 4TBs, and then migrated over to the DS925, the presentation on screen was, although not quite as aggressive as using SATA SSDs for a full brand new storage pool, I will say they are still a lot of alarming uh, amber text, just saying unverified and migrated and stuff like that, and the wording did still seem to be a little overbearing, but what I didn't like was the fact that I was not able to expand that storage pool. I had two 4TB Seagate drives, and when I did try to expand upon those, the result was it wouldn't let me use another Seagate 4TB to expand. It wouldn't let me use another 4TB drive, exactly the same model ID, by the way, to create a hot spare. That is a problem to me. Now, I didn't have a spare Synology drive to see if I could use a Synology drive to create a hot spare or expand. My gut tells me it would work. As I say, I didn't have a spare 4TB. It's the one test I couldn't really do in this hard drive test series. But still, nonetheless, you're not able, at least at this time of recording, and at the very least, while that 4TB drive is not on the verified storage uh, compatibility list, to expand an existing migrated pool with drives on the DS925+. Plus. Presumably, if this drive was on that verification list, if Synology had it down the road with Seagate, that would be different, but this really irked me. Unverified Storage Pool RAID Recovery Test. Much like the inability to expand or create a hot spare using an unverified drive on an unverified drive pool that was nonetheless supported on the DS923 Plus that I migrated from, I was not able to add the, a new drive when this RAID was put into degradation. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, in simple terms, I took one drive from the two-disc SHR that had Seagate 4TBs in uh, an unverified but nonetheless running RAID environment, and when I tried to reintroduce the exact same model ID of drive for Seagate 4TB to repair, it wouldn't allow me to action that RAID recovery. That is a problem because although you should have a backup in place i don't like the idea that when the sand is going out of the hourglass on a raid uh, degradation that if i have another seagate 4tb if it's not on the uh, verified compatibility list and i'm not able to use a drive in my hand to repair my system in a raid degradation that is a problem to me on a side note when i did disconnect the 4TB drive that was in the existing pool 
uh, that was still running from the migration but was still an unverified disk. If I reintroduced that same drive, interestingly, the option to repair the RAID presented itself if I used that same drive because it could tell there was Synology data or at least Synology data layout on that disk I was reintroducing to constitute that RAID recovery there. So at the very least it regged that the drive existed within that pool so you know a, an accidental disconnection but still this does not detract from the fact that if I have got a drive that has legitimately failed and I have a same model and class of drive as the RAID pool the fact I can't RAID recover is a real real pain here. Now, I know the comments are probably already on fire, even for those that haven't even got to this point in the video, but I'm gonna say right now, about half of the things that were featured on this, it's not that they didn't bother me as much, it was just Synology have always kind of gone down that road, but I will say the other half have really annoyed me, in particular, the way with drive migration is being handled here. Now, on the one hand, it's good that they're supporting migration of unverified or unofficially uh, supported drives from older Synology NAS systems onto this one. But let's not kid ourselves. If you're moving away from, say, a four-base system, chances are you're doing so to go to a larger, perhaps eight-base system, like the DS 1825 Plus when that arrives. And maybe you're migrating away from a two or four-bay and you want to reuse those drives. Now, at the time, as those tests indicated, at least at the time of recording, I should say, the fact that I can't expand that RAID, the fact that I can't repair that RAID based on the test that I did, unless I use those verified drives, is a real problem. Because yes, you should have a backup in place, and yes, RAID is not a backup, but there's no denying that if I am in a scenario where my four bays of storage, one drive dies, and I can't replace it with any other drive but a Synology drive. And Synology drives do not have the global availability of, of other third party drives in the market. That is a problem for me. Now we have to at least attempt to be balanced. We have to at least acknowledge that the DS95 Plus has only just been launched and that revamped uh, certification, verification, compatibility process may well add further drives down the line. However, if it's not going to add every single mainstream drive in the market right now, I have a problem with the idea that if I use three Seagate Iowolf drives from my DS923 Plus that were able to be used and are, by the way, on the compatibility list of that device, if I take these drives and put it inside a new system and there is the potential that I can't RAID recover this with another one of its drive, I can't expand with it, that is problematic to me. Now perhaps these are isolated things that happened during my testing and maybe it's the fact that I used drives where there might have been a power issue. Maybe I used um, Seagate uh, uh, SSDs that maybe we've seen in the past when it's come to SSD systems have had issues. Now, Synology treating this like an appliance in their own words and then locking in on just specifically verified drives for stability. There are elements of these tests that we have done that although aren't going to be popular, at least live within that remit. Things like not being able to use unverified drives to create storage pools. I don't like it, you don't like it, but it has to be said it does conform to what they're trying to do. However, I don't like the fact that they would allow for migrations, but seemingly based on my tests, uh, create barriers to recovery, barriers to expansion, barriers to adding some of those features. If you're gonna allow me to migrate so you can keep people in the ecosystem, but then bar some of the expandability and certainly the recovery elements, I know I'm sounding like a broken record, I do not like this. Now, as mentioned in another video, Synology apparently is working with WD and Seagate to verify a lot more drives to be added to compatibility lists. And it sounds like a lot of that verification, the overhead is being moved to them. We've not heard anything official on that, but I've heard plenty of whispers and statements from people around the Synology bubble. But if it's not gonna be all the drives, I know that's not gonna please everyone and it can't possibly be all the drives. I think this is definitely a policy of presentation and handling that Synology need to change upon here. So as negative as the end of this video is, I will say that Synology have listened to users in the past. They have changed some of their policies in the past, 
based on user feedback. And again, look at DSM 7.1 when it rolled out or the way it presented drives there. Now, is that conclusive? No, Synology might just be going long haul here, wanted to go into the appliance systems uh, uh, build there and want to focus on that enterprise. They may well do that. But right now, this is a system that recording this video on the 5th isn't even available globally. So I've got to at least give them that benefit of the doubt that they will listen to this feedback and act upon it. So at least for now, this is the status quo, but it might not be if you are looking at one of these systems in the future for yourselves. All I can recommend is if you are looking at a Synology 2025 series device and later, whether you are a new buyer or a migrating buyer, look at the compatibility and verification list before you purchase it. Don't trust the eShop that's just gonna lump the drives in, check it for yourself because you might lock yourself in to drives that you might not be able to expand later on, adding to e-waste, adding to disappointment, adding possibly to data loss. So again, be aware. Thank you so much for watching. I know this isn't gonna make a video, it's, uh, video that's gonna make a lot of people angry. Let's talk about it in the comments. And again, check out Dave007, Dave Russell there, as he's gonna be exploring this a little bit more on a technical level. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.